everybody. It's just after 8 a.m. Christmas morning, so Merry Christmas. Uh, last night before I went to bed, I got this last minute idea that I want to take an early morning hike to this cabin that has kind of a Christmassy theme to it. So this video is obviously gonna come out after Christmas, but I myself am celebrating part of my Christmas with my family later this year. So it lines up for me at least. Anyways, I just dropped Ange off at work. It's like I said, just after eight. Uh, I apologize if the lighting isn't the best, but I just wanted to get out here. Well, the snow was on the ground, because I came here once last year when there was fresh snowfall and this cabin looks to me in the best when it's in the snow. And of course right now it's a classic wet coast, west coast winter with pouring rain. There's snow around me because we had a blizzard last week, but two days later, of course, quickly turns to rain. Anyways, almost there. Cool, river crossing. came to the cabin this heart in the tree caught my eye my favorite number is nine and I don't know why this heart's here what the nine is for there's kind of a kind of a nine or maybe an ear I don't know symbol inside the heart and then if you look behind there there's the cabin So far, coming here last minute, this early in the morning, um, isn't the smartest idea, not just because, well, it isn't the smartest idea because I didn't bring any flashlights. So I obviously have the flash on my phone. That's about it. So it's pretty dark in here. This is it. Whew, I'm not sure I look in that light. As mentioned, that the reason I came here on Christmas Day, kind of last minute, is because this has a Christmas theme to it, this place. This cabin, as states in this book, that's for everybody to see. This cabin was originally part of a Christmas tree farm. So all these trees around us right now, well, not all of them, because there's some arbutus trees, but majority of these trees around us were once part of this large Christmas tree farm out here. This 164 acre piece of land here sits on Mount Work Regional Park and considering how common Mount Work is, like the, the hike to the summit as well as all the mountain bike trails on it, I feel like this cabin is pretty low key, not known about. I think it's because of the area of the mountain that it's situated on. It's kind of on the opposite side of where all the hiking trails are. Some people come mountain biking down this road here that I hiked up. Other than that, I think that's the only reason I can think of that it's uh, it's not as well known as the rest of this hike. In 1957, a forester and entomologist by the name of Jim Kinghorn and his wife Shirley had been left some money from Shirley's dying mother. While majority of the money was invested, the little that was left over was used to purchase two lots of land in the highlands just outside Victoria, British Columbia. These two lots, labeled number 56 and number 63, both covered 160 acres of land. Here, over the next couple decades, Jim would slowly build what became quite simply known as the tree farm. 
In 1959, Jim, with the help from his dad, would begin selling Christmas trees that he cut at the farm. They would set up trees at the corner gas station that his brother-in-law rented along Douglas Street in downtown Victoria. He would sell an average of 400 to 500 trees a year, and he'd continue this until 1971 when he injured his hand and decided finally to retire from the Christmas tree business. Jim would begin building the cabin in 1979 after deciding on the location a year earlier. He chose a spot high on the hill because at the time it had a view of the valley and Sandwich Inlet. However, given the time that has passed since then, all the trees have grown and obscured the once promising view. The cabin's foundation is built from old star blocks that were filled with concrete that Jim hand mixed on site. The roof was built from beams Jim drove to Vancouver to pick up. He had also had plans to pipe water from the spring on Spring Ridge Trail down to the cabin for a sink and a toilet, but unfortunately rodents had ate through most of the plastic piping. To provide heat to the cabin, Jim would install a wood stove on three separate occasions due to the first two being stolen. The last one was removed when the property was sold to the TLC to prevent any visitors from potentially causing a fire. Not only did Jim have problems with thieves stealing his wood stoves, he also had issues with them stealing his tools. To counteract this, he made two separate hiding places for them. One was a secret wall behind the toilet, and the other was this removable spot in the floor in front of the sliding glass door. Gaining access to the cabin would prove to be difficult at first. Jim initially used existing logging roads to access the future home of the cabin, but eventually he would build more stable roads with star blocks just like that in the base of the cabin. In 2013, Jim would visit the tree farm one final time. His son Russ drove him up the old road in his four-wheel drive Chevrolet's tracker. Jim had begun frail and weak, so his kids knew this would be the final time he could visit his beloved and beautiful property. Today, Kinghorn Cabin sits as is, a shelter from the rain for those that may be passing by while also being a reminder about what was once there. It was Jim's wish to keep this cabin on the property when the land was sold back in 2008. He wanted those that visit to enjoy it as much as he once did, so if you happen to visit it yourself, please respect it and clean up after yourself before leaving. Thank you.